Good afternoon, YouTube friends. I finally got a car that I haven't done on the channel in for tint. I figured I'll let you guys watch me take it apart. You can kind of see what I usually do with these. Um, this one, tinting the two fronts to match the back. It's a Mazda CX-30. I think it's brand new, uh, 21. Um, pretty easy to take apart on these, but I do remember it used to be the patterns were not very good. I haven't cut patterns for one of these on the computer in a while. Um, so maybe we'll try out the core pattern, see if they fit where they darn. Otherwise I'm probably going to be hand cutting this. Hopefully they updated them though. Cause they were really short before. They were like, like a quarter inch short, like absurd. But I guess that works for whoever at core precision cut makes patterns. Or maybe they never put the patterns to an actual car. I don't know. But here we go. Say hi wife. No, never. So take out the screw behind the thing here. The little cover just pops right off. Um, you got like one or two clips. And I think this is like the CX-5s where you don't want to pop this back one, but we'll find out in a second. If not, yeah, I think, I think this is like just the same like the CX-5s where uh, you don't want to pop the back one. You have them. You need a hand mic? <laughs> Let's see. Can't get a grip on this. Usually you can just give it a good tug. There we go. And then if you just kind of bend it a little bit, it comes right out. Pull it forward there. And then when you put it in, just pop it back in. Um, this one did not pull the door panel clips out like Mazda's like to. That's good. Hopefully the front, the other door does the same. You need a hand? Oh, you got it? <laughs> like a cramp? <laughs> you use that muscle for its first time ever. <laughs> oh yeah. Your bowling muscle. Let's go bowling. Ah, uh, I think I got I got a research paper for that truck driving class I got to type up tonight. Uh, I'm a boring person. Work school. Work school. Work school. But. Whatever. I'm a middle-aged father of two. I'm supposed to be boring. When do I buy my red Corvette? Not that kind of red Corvette, Mike. <laughs> That's for Uncle Fred. <laughs> oh boy, all right. So, what do you think? Are my core patterns gonna fit? Or am I gonna be let down again? Actually, lately they've been getting pretty good. I just did a Tiguan yesterday, and I think it was yesterday, and the patterns were absolutely spot on. I had to send them a message telling them do not screw these up they are perfect there's my door windows for the 72 chevelle got it finished up be able to get those out of my hair let's go ahead and meter this they wanted it to match looks pretty dark but has little windows so maybe 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 that's why it looks dark is the little windows Oh, 
What do we got? 22%. So I'm gonna use 20. Fronts will be a tiny bit darker. I don't think anybody will know. This is in my dealer film, so I only get 35 or 20. And uh, the 20 runs a tiny bit dark, but if I was using ceramic, probably a 25 would be good. 20 in our basic ATC film uh, be a really close match. And this one, the fronts will be a little bit darker. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Had a good call last night regarding the company. Um, sounds like somebody I know is very interested in it. Um, they're going to work and try to figure out some financing. Obviously, I'm going to help him out with a good portion of the financing, but he still needs to come up with some just get up and go money, right? Got to set up a company and have some money or credit or something in reserve. Oh my, Lanta. Oh, good. I guess it's just running slow. Earlier it had me put in my password and like all my passwords, I did not know it. Had to go reset my password and get back in. Hate that. Always when you need to do something is when it decides you need to put in your password. Let's see, five stars, Subaru, Tiguan. Send them a message. Leave them alone. They're perfect. Below the gasket. Front doors. 40 inch roll. Now see this says legacy right here. That's a bad sign because the old patterns didn't fit where the darn. Here's your sign. Remember when that was my mask sign for the front door? And everybody used to laugh at it. Here's your sign. I was in a beanbag chair naked eating Cheetos. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Love it. Alright. Here we go. Dun dun dun. I don't even know that. Well, I guess this is 21. They still make CX30s. They just kind of like popped up out of nowhere and. I always see CX-5s, I never see CX-30s. So, uh, maybe, maybe whoever's in charge of these patterns never sees CX-30s either. And so they've never been fixed. And I know I can go in the computer and I can adjust the patterns and make them fit and whatever, but uh, that just takes too long. What? Breaking news, several people wounded and three dead. Six others shot at this Michigan High School. Oh my god. Shooter is a sophomore at school. Oh no. Oh no. This is not good oh my god well this is good the news apparently mike just read there was a shooting at a michigan high school and that's bad news for many 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 reasons um i don't know did i clean these windows i don't think i did that other one felt kind of crunchy We'll clean this one real quick. Uh, it's always kind of, I hate reading about these stories because I have a high schooler and another one that is not too far away in middle school, soon to be high school. And I always wonder what is going on 
with this. Um, I don't want to get political about things, but you know, it's it's just crazy. Like, cause I mean, obviously that's where all of this will go is a bunch of political fighting. But my son, the first week of his school, uh, there is a parking lot across the street from his school and there was a shooting in that parking lot across the street from school. One of the students had to go to the hospital. I think he was all right. I think he got shot in the foot. I mean, all right as you are getting shot in the foot, but um, yeah, first week of school. And uh, it's just crazy to, to wonder, like when I was in school, I think I was in school when Columbine happened. And I wanna say before that, never, like when you were in high school, Mike, did you, when you were in high school, was there ever once that you thought about there might be a shooter at my school? Yeah. And you were out of school by the time Columbine happened, right? I think it happened my senior year. And then, you know, there was kind of a lot of talk and whatever, and then that sort of died down and didn't think much of it. And then I don't remember, there was something else. And then it just starts getting more and more and more. And I don't know, like what, what the heck, right? Like, where, where? Like if this all kind of followed from Columbine or, or you know, I, I, I mildly blame the media for a lot of this. They, they really kind of sensationalize this, um, which I mean, obviously you want to report on it, bring awareness or whatever, but I got a feeling that this is going to be non-stop politicians fighting people fighting people protesting just everything for like the next two to four weeks and i don't know i mean it, it's just kind of one of those things that does it put these shooters in a place where they gain notoriety like is that where where do these come from um, you know people sometimes say video games or music or whatever um, I mean I do think we are very comfortable with violence um, you are bombarded with it on TV basically non-stop maybe to the point where it takes some of the reality of it away um, I don't know kind of sad I hope I hope I hope I hope that uh, you know obviously they Mike said on the article that there's several dead but Hopefully uh, that's the extent of it and we don't have to hear the next few days more people dying. But I don't know. All right, I guess since I got nothing to do and you guys are here, I'm just going to tent kind of bored and kind of sad after hearing that news and so I just hope my kids make it through their high school years relatively unscathed uh, luckily like my son he's got a pretty good head on his shoulders even if he makes some kind of dumb decisions every once in a while. 
but at least I don't feel like he would be one of those people that's a target of something like this. Um, you know, but you never know. Hopefully, keep his head on a swivel. The numbers, you know, that's one thing that I kind of usually have to remind myself is that, I mean, this happens maybe once a year, once every few years. And I mean, there's thousands upon thousands of high schools and colleges and whatnot across the country. So, I mean, the reality of it is we're talking, you know, a, a hundredth of a percent chance of it happening in the four year period he's in high school. But still, like every time it happens, start thinking about things, then kind of just gotta calm down, remind yourself there's millions of people out there that are just fine and uh, going throughout their day. Let's see. How many people did it say died, Mike? Like seven? Yeah. Three people died? Did it say if they were students or staff or? Oh no. Well, feel bad for the families. One of my old tenors used to work with me. His son got murdered in a drive-by. I think his son was like 20, 21 maybe, at the oldest. I think he was 20. Um, some guy went to a party. They kind of got into a little bit of a fight and he sort of jumped in for a friend. And then I guess the person that that friend was fighting with came around to their house the next day and he sort of went outside trying to be tough and the guy that went looking for him shot him dead in the street. Young guy, 20 years old, started a pretty good job, had a really good thing going with a nice girl and they were, you know, he, he had, he had kind of lived that thug life earlier, but it really seemed like he was starting to get his life on track and, and bought himself a nice little truck and was just kind of plugging away. And, uh, and then boom, done. And that was heartbreaking for my tenor to lose his son at that age and I think that maybe oh these are a little bit short damn it we'll put it exact exact on the front and we're gonna cross our fingers that there's no gap on the back um I think him and his son had not really been talking too much when it happened and so uh you know it's one of those things where he can never go back and uh patch things up just kind of left left him hanging as a father right like can't ever make up that time that you guys were that you guys were fighting just all the more reason to try to keep things good between you and other people if they're an important person in your life. Yeah. Sometimes it seems the immediate matters 
of the heart are important, you know, arguing about stuff, whatever, but if you waste time resolving them, you might not ever be able to resolve it. So I'm kind of an idiot who gets screwed over a lot because somebody will cause me issue. And then, you know, a few months goes by or whatever. And then I've mostly forgiven them, forgotten about it. And then I give them time to screw me over again. But it's all right because very rarely am I left with unresolved issues with people where I go back and regret not resolving them. Family, whatever. I will say, hopefully none of my family listens to this, but I do have an uncle that he passed away not too long ago. It's been a couple years now. And he was very um, uh, I don't know how to put it. He put a woman above his child and it was a very important time in his two sons life where they really needed a, a strong father figure and instead <clears throat> excuse me instead <clears throat> he basically abandoned them for this woman and I actually took in one of my cousins. He was 14, 15 at the time and uh, got legal guardianship of him, got him in school, helped him get his first job, helped him with his first car, you know, all the stuff that a dad should do. Now, I was young at the time. I was 25, 26. Well, maybe I had my company. If I had my company, I was probably like, 27 or 28 um, But I got like chili skin in my throat Mike <laughs> You know like the Like little red flakes of the chili skin or the seed or whatever. <laughs> I got it like stuck in my throat um, But yeah, or like the pepper flake or whatever they call that um no, not at all. <clears throat> yeah, who knows? Um, but yeah, so I actually got guardianship of of his youngest son and and took him in and you know, just tried to help get him on on a decent track. Our other uncle help me out to I mean I, I at that age I wasn't really looking to be a dad to a teenager but I think my cousin needed something better in his life and and I, I, overall I'm actually really proud of that cousin he is doing pretty well for himself he's finding kind of what he likes in life. Uh, he's about ready to move out of Albuquerque, which I'm pretty confident is going to be a big move for him. Like as a person, I, th I think it's, it's like a growth move to where Albuquerque, we call this place the land of entrapment. Um, it's, it's very hard to get out of here especially if you don't go like the college route and uh but the people here also tend to
keep you here like I don't know if you remember that like crabs in a bucket theory right like one of the crabs starts crawling out of a bucket and the other crabs grab onto him and pull him back in and uh, you know it's it's kind of like that you know your friends relationships family they, they don't they don't ever want to see you do good for yourself a lot of times like I don't know too many places in the world where it's like hey I got a good job and people are like so what you think you're better than us now <laughs> like there's not congratulations you know what I'm talking about right Mike uh -huh, see and uh, you know it's just it's just weird like and and so he's gonna be moving and I think it's gonna be a really really positive thing for him and, and I hope it is I, I hope he gets to go make some new experiences meet some new people growing his job and yeah but uh anyways so that uncle he was and, and I mean there was things going on with his life I know but um he was really kind of nasty to me during that during that time period when it's like look I am helping your son right like you're not willing to help him I'm helping him don't give me a hard time but he was and I got a feeling the woman in his life was pushing him and kind of coaching him too and they're probably doing things that you know was was influencing their lifestyle and uh, but I basically wrote him off in my life and I could never trust him for anything like I just always felt like everything he kind of said was a lie and he had sort of a a distorted view of what the reality of the situation was he could never fully accept that that he was really the major cause of the problems in his life and in his family it was always i mean sadly he would always try to blame it on his kids and it's like you can't blame your kids because you're a terrible dad like it just doesn't work that way and so need to say he passed away and i've never felt an ounce of regret for uh not catching things up with him i think if he had maybe tried a little harder to work things out with his kids and i mean he had two sons that were now in their early 20s they were getting apartments having families getting their careers going you know lots of things probably wouldn't have been too hard to send him a few bucks and say here buy you some furniture you know here's a uh, first and last months on a on an apartment you know just anything like like try to make up for that time that you we're not doing what you're supposed to do. That looks good. But he just, oh well, they they were disrespectful to me. And it's like they were 14 and 16 years old. Like, <laughs> I mean, I sincerely doubt they were only reciprocating the examples that they had been set in their household. And so if they were disrespecting you, it's probably because you were disrespecting people in the house yourself whatever and uh but all i can say is he'll never be able to go back and fix his relationship with his kids 
and it's always going to be left where it was left when he passed away. Uh oh, thought it looked good. What's going on over here? Uh, just air. I don't know where that air came from. Don't know where that came from. Looked almost like the tent peeled back, laid back down. Maybe it was a patch of water. But, uh, so, like I said, my kids, I hope nothing like whatever this Michigan story that's developing I ever have to deal with. But in the meantime, I'm not going to jeopardize my relationship with them. Sorry, I'm trying to think. There's like a small gap on this front one. I don't know if it's a difference from right to left on the patterns. Let's see what the back looks like. Or maybe the window shifted when I rolled it up. But I'm trying to decide, okay, if I have enough room. See, I think, where's this at? I think these patterns are different left and right. Could be that the doors are different left and right. It's small, we're gonna leave it. But, or do you think I should do it? Maybe we'll try something. Let's, let's get crafty. Let's get crafty. I got time. Although, <laughs> Funny story about this car. I know, we're getting kind of long into this. But, uh, but, uh, I was actually supposed to pull this car in like two hours ago. I had this lady show up in a Subaru. So we're gonna take the front right door. We're gonna delete the left door. And then we're gonna mirror this. So now, our left door should be the same pattern that our right door was that fit really good. But anyways, lady pulled up in a Subaru and she pulled up parked like almost to the mirror of this car. I couldn't get in it. And there was a whole bunch of issues. She had a broken back window on her car, but like the hatch hit a a tow truck and so the hatch was all dented. I didn't think that a, a glass was gonna fit correctly in it because of the way the hatch was bent. And so, you know, we're talking about that. Very, and, and I get it, you know, she's a middle-aged woman. Um, but like not very capable, I guess would be what you'd say. And so it's like, well, you can probably find a hatch at a salvage yard and just get the hatch replaced. It'll probably cost as much as the window because the window is going to be like $550, $600 when it was all said and done. And it's like, I'm pretty sure you can get the whole hatch replaced. But if I start working on this and I get got to pull the spoiler and some trim in the back and all the interior trim and change the... Uh, or pull out the the rear wiper like and, and the motor and everything you know pretty big job i'll be probably 150 dollars worth of labor into it and get to a point where i have to tell her your glass isn't gonna fit so it's like call a salvage yard see if you can find back window well i don't know how to do that and it's like, all right, well, I'll go look online. There's a website. See if I can find you a few places to call. There's a website called Carfart, and you can put in the parts, and it'll tell you who of, of the salvage yards that subscribe to that, if they, if they have that part. And I found eight different hatches for her, three different places. 
like, all right, I found you some hatches. And then it's like, you, all you gotta do, find someone to put it in, maybe a mechanic or a body shop. Well, you know, who, who do I take it for that? And it's like, well, I don't know, lady. Don't you have a mechanic for your car? No. It's like, all right, well. And then I remembered, because it's a Subaru, I have a friend Kyle, has a shop called All Wheel Performance. And uh, really, really, really top-notch Subaru guys. And so it's like, oh yeah, Kyle could probably do this. Let me get you Kyle's information. And, you know, just like, I had to walk her through like every step of everything. But in the meanwhile, she was parked so close to this car, I couldn't get in this car to get started on it. And she kept asking me questions, so I couldn't really get away from her to start on this car either. So it was really frustrating. But uh, so I'm already running behind on it. But as you can tell by how busy Mike is, we don't exactly have a whole ton of work going on right now. And so got that truck finished. I don't know if you saw my short, the ugly brown tent, but I got the ugly brown truck stripped and tinted, put it in our Lumars ceramic film. Be super nice for it. Oh my gosh. This guy, that's the cocking gun guy. <laughs> Let's see what this guy, Let's see what this guy wants. This is my friend Frisbee's friend. <laughs> Thank you for the burritos. Thank you for the burritos. Oh yeah, everybody likes uh, the carne autovada burritos. Yeah. You're on the, I don't know about the on my video. <laughs> I don't know about the beans if you like them or not. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I eat everything. I didn't get fat by not eating. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you, do you like uh, Latin music? I like all music. I build car audio systems. Oh yeah? And so I listen to music of all kinds because I like to hear how they sound well, on the car audio systems. The reason I ask you is because uh, I was a performer all my life. Oh really? I was a singer. In Albuquerque? All over the country, uh, did, internationally too. Did you ever play in Albuquerque? Oh yeah. Well, my wife's dad was a really good musician. Here, let me. I used to have. Okay, YouTube friends, I'm back. I just need to talk with that gentleman. And then I got interrupted with a call, Medicare scammers. Had to kind of screw with them. Took up a solid three minutes or so of their time. Just being an idiot. It's kind of fun being an idiot with telephone scammers. And uh, went ahead and retinted this one. I think maybe these doors are slightly, slightly different. But now there's enough of a gap that I'm not gonna feel self-conscious about it. It's, I mean, it's like a millimeter. I don't think anybody will know. So there we go. Um, I gotta put the sweeps back in. Maybe I'll show you what that looks like. I don't know, maybe you saw it on the other door. But, uh, let's torch this real quick. Get it started sticking. Get this nice and hot right away. Especially this classic black film. It'll start sticking almost immediately. Um, a little bit of some lubrication on the sweep here. Pull this door panel back. Slide that in real nice like. Give it a bend. And pop, pop, pop. So, just gotta throw my screws in. But this is 2021 Mazda CX-30. This covers all Mazda CX-30s. Film or privacy glass meters, 22%. 20% film will get you pretty, pretty close match there. And we're good. 
Uh, I don't think I'm gonna come back after this is done drying. I don't have too much more to say. Uh, send some prayers out to the families in Michigan. Really, that's gonna that's gonna bum my night out. But uh, I'll talk to you guys later.